All right. So I think that's kind of all the housekeeping issues. So without further delay, I would like to introduce Dr. Stephen Kramer, who's the Vice Provost of Teaching and Learning and Professor of Civil and Environmental Engineering. Many of you may have already had the pleasure of learning from Dr. Kramer in his current or one of his prior roles. He has multiple responsibilities, including um, leading the following initiatives, um, educational innovation, teaching and research professional development, the student digital ecosystem, undergraduate research and honors, student advising and learning assessment, and the Wisconsin experience. So today, uh, Dr. Kramer is going to share with us his experiences around some of the Wisconsin experience areas, um, with a particular focus and interest in the empathy and humility. So um, please help me welcome Dr. Kramer. Thank you, Sue. Can you hear me? Yeah, I think we're good. Good morning, Teaching Academy. Nice to be here. You know, the seasonal effect disorder stuff kind of hits me. The sun is out this morning, though. My solar collectors are out, unfortunately, not drawing in here, but the sun's out. It's a good day. Um, I want to direct your attention to the poster that's on your table. If uh, you already have one, and I'm going to move around so I don't get into my feedback problems, but if you don't already have one, you got one, and you can never have too many. So, um, so we're going to kind of walk through this very briefly. So, in turbulent times, I think it's important to know who you are. You know, we have tweets, we have accusations, we have fake news, we have accusations of fake news, it's really real news. On and on, it just goes on and on and on. And um, at least for me personally, enduring this is helpful, reminding myself who I am. But I also think that's important for us as a collective, as an institution, to be clear, to be unambiguous about who we are, and, and enter then the Wisconsin experience in that regard. So why is identity important? Why is it more important now, other than the reasons I just gave? Um, certainly it's about attracting students, and not just Wisconsin students, but students in a globally competitive higher ed environment to the University of Wisconsin-Madison. You know, you don't automatically go to regional university anymore you go to the institution that's going to lift you. It's going to elevate you. It's going to put you on that path of success. You may not know what major as a student you're, you're going to pursue, but you're expecting that institution to put you on that path to success. You know, one thing that's really interesting about our time now is that tuition is important. Years ago, it was probably 20 years ago, I was talking to a colleague in my department, and he said, you know, we ought to just get rid of undergraduate education at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. We don't need it. We're, we're, we're a research institution. It ought to be about the graduate experience. And you know, I didn't say too much. I kind of rolled my eyes at the time. But interestingly enough, such a move would have today been a disaster. We rely on undergraduate tuition for the financial well-being of our university. So undergraduate education has become more important than it was 20 years ago, not less. Um, if you look, of course, at the state demographics, you're going to see a con continual decline in high school graduates. Um, so it's not like more and more Wisconsin students are going to come here, even if, if they want to. I mean, there's just not enough of them. So <clears throat> our ranking and our financial stability <coughs> depend on being a national and international magnet for intellectual talent undergraduate students. And <clears throat> this has never before been as important as it will be in the next five years. Now, 
I tend to believe that advertising must reflect reality. So the quality of the UW brand, and I mean, if we're going to talk about Wisconsin experience as part of an admissions exercise, doggone it, we better have a Wisconsin experience here that's real. So um, let's take a moment. Let's kind of walk through the brochure. You've probably seen it before, heard it before, never heard security again. I kind of start at the end of the brochure. Purposeful action. We want students, when they finish here, to go out and do to change the world. No couch potatoes. We want doers. And, you know, our strategy ought to be around trying to bring that out in every individual. And this is what students want, too. This is what parents want. This is why, why they send um, young people here. So purposeful action, doing, uh, exercising your art, your discipline, your craft. Now, to be a doer, you have to have confidence. You need confidence to, to feel empowered to go out and do. Um, so, as an example, don't we admire the uh, basketball player who makes the winning free throw in the remaining seconds of the game to win the game for the team? I would argue that that particular activity on the basketball court isn't particularly about skill. Maybe not everybody, but just about everybody in this room can make a free throw, a basketball free throw. What it takes is a combination of practice and confidence. Not just skill, practice and confidence, and a lot of that. And under pressure, you know, one can lose their confidence. So, so the more you practice, the more you're, you're, you're able to succeed in that circumstance. Um, and if you don't have that confidence, you know, and have built up that through practice, you know, you might miss the free throw. So intellectual confidence in building involves practicing your art, your discipline, whatever it might be. So, moving up next, um, intellectual confidence is built on relentless curiosity. You know, the, you gotta have the desire. You gotta have the desire to learn, to know, to be able to do. Um, and, you know, I think um, part of that, that curiosity is a persistence. You know, if you're going to go out and change the world and succeed and do, you know, you're going to have to build up some persistence along the way. You're going to have to be willing to kind of go that extra mile. And, you know, our currency here is kind of that intellectual uh, currency, so to speak, that landscape. So, um, Developing persistence and curiosity and pushing and making sure I really understand the concept um, is required to achieve the things that are listed below curiosity. So lastly then we come to empathy and humility. Um, I'm delighted you picked this as a focus topic um, for today. Um, I think it's really tough to be curious if you already know it all. Hard to be curious <laughs> if you can't relate to anyone else. You know, if it's all about you. Um, boy, and, and yet we seem to be struggling with that. You know, this kind of egocentric, narcissist view of the world. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't know if it's Twitter, Facebook, or, or what, but it seems so many folks kind of have that, that viewpoint. So this, you know, this is the hardest one, the empathy and humility one. Um, and yet, it sets the tone, it sets the climate for learning. I think that empathy and humility help define acceptable social interaction. 
learning interaction. We put students in teams, we have them work together. If they don't have any empathy and humility, you know, it's probably not going to go well. So, you know, we need this um, really more than ever, in, in my opinion. And yet, it's probably not immediately obvious um, how you gain it, how you achieve it in a classroom. Um, you know, you have. A number of experts here, and, and it sounds like you know we're going to hear great ideas about how to do that. You know, the first question is, can empathy be learned? And, and you know, just kind of a cursory looking that I've done, um, I think it's just established that some people are genetically inclined to be highly empathetic, and others are not. But generally, we develop empathy as children primarily through observing how others show it. And experts tell us that empathy can be taught to adults and, and young adults. So uh, I've always thought, particularly in the context of the university here, especially kind of that freshman and sophomore year, your eyes are open to a world that you probably never thought about before. And I really think that's part of the empathy and humility development. Certainly for me, the more I studied, the more I realized how little I knew. And, and it drove me to keep studying further. And yet, that may not be the exact starting point when freshmen come in here. They may not actually feel that way. So the trick is how to do that. In many of our courses, those that don't necessarily deal with people and cultures, how do you grow that empathy and humility part? How do we teach and foster empathy and humility in an online environment? You know, how, how do we create the interactions? You know, we're going to be doing more of that type of instruction in, in future years, so we, we need to figure it out. So I've talked enough. I hope your morning is productive. Your collective thoughts move us forward in making the Wisconsin experience a real thing, particularly with regard to empathy and humility. Thank you.